Good morning and welcome this morning. It's wonderful to have everyone here. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Lord, Lord is God. Son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, 
because Moses had laid his hands on him. And the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land. And for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 90. Let us read it in unison. O oh God, you have been our refuge from one generation to the other. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust of say, Go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight, are like yesterday and in this past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, and the evening it is dry up and withered. Return, O God, how long will you carry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad of all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you have put in us, and the years in which you suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. A reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. <clears throat> For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or pretext of greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, 
They gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So, this passage or similar ones in, the, in um, Mark and all are very well known. The summary of the law, it's even in the prayer book. And at times we say the summary of the law, depending on the service we're doing. Love God and love your neighbor, basically is what it says. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. The Shema. The first thing a, a good Jewish person says every single morning when they get up. So the one thing that ties them both together is love. So what is love? If somebody asked you the question, what is love? What would you say? These are not rhetorical questions today, so you get to answer. <laughs> I know you prefer rhetorical questions, but this is not one. So what is love? Grace. Grace. Not selfish. Not selfish. Intersection of God and humanity. Okay, intersection of God and humanity. Kindness. 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 It's one of those words that's a little hard to define, isn't it? As you're trying to figure out, you're pulling, like trying to say, what is love? Not one that you can define it by what it's not very easily than by what it is. It's, it's one of those kinds of words. So the first commandment was to love God. So what does it mean to love God? Let's make it even easier for you to answer. How do you love God? Be a vessel of His grace. Be a vessel of God's grace. Keep in touch. How do you keep in touch with God? By listening. Listening. Asking for forgiveness. Asking for forgiveness. By being the best human being you can be. By being who, who God has made you to be. I'll change the wording for you. <laughs> what else? What are you doing today? Worship. Worship. What else are you doing while you're worshiping? Prayer. And what else? What did I just do? What did Mary Jane just do? Read the scriptures. Scriptures. Thank you. <laughs> so for us, for most of us, it's about worship, prayer, and scripture. Scripture study. You know, if you want to go into the mystics, you can increase the amount of ways that they express love for God. And if you haven't read some of those mystics, you should, because it gets very interesting. Because when you described love, none of you talked about romantic love. It was really interesting. Not a single person mentioned that, probably because you're in church. <laughs> but even the mystics talk about a romantic relationship with God. I'm gonna put it that way just in case there's any children listening. <laughs> They, they talk about coupling and stuff in the mystics with God. It's a very interesting way of talking about love with God. For them, it was that intimate, and the only way they could express it is 
in human terms. So when we think about love of God, we must th mostly think about our time in worship, about our prayer time, and about the scripture studies that we do on a regular basis. And then some of you led to one of the other things, which is the second law, the love of the neighbor. And that is the other half of this, the thing that we talk about. So going back to God for just a moment, the Shema states that we shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength. That's a lot. Because that means with our entire being, we are to love God. It also means if we're doing it with our entire being, we're doing it all the time. That is not easy. We talk about praying with, without ceasing. But have you ever like thought about that, truly? I don't know about you, my mind wanders even in the middle of prayer. You know, and I admit to it, but everyone I know that happens to, by the way, so it's, it is the norm. We are human. You know, I'll be, I'll be in silent prayer, and I'll find my mind going to, oh yeah, I can't forget to do da 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 da, you know, and then it's like, oh, come back to God. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but when I start thinking about something, I can't let it go. I have to actually finish the full thought before I can fully return to God. It's not easy to love God all the time with everything we have because we're human and our minds go everywhere. But it is good to think about all the time that we should pray without ceasing because that helps bring us back all the time to turn around, ask for forgiveness, come back to God. When we love God, we say to love God, we also say love our neighbor because to love God is to love our neighbor and to love our neighbor is to love God. They go together. We can't love God without loving our neighbor. We can't love our neighbor without loving God. It's kind of an unusual mix of things that happen there. It's just how it is with God. Because God is in everyone, so if we love our neighbor, we're automatically loving God. And how can you love God without loving God's children? You have to. It's a part of it. And to love God is to want to imitate God. And imitate God in terms of taking care of God's children and taking all of their needs seriously. That's a huge part of loving our neighbor. To take their needs seriously. Now one time I had to go out to preach about universal income. <laughs> I do remember that. There was not a lot of happiness in the congregation after I did that. I got hit up by a few people about, well, if everybody gets money, you know, they're just going to use it for drugs. They're just going to go off. Then what are we going to do? And at the time, it was really hard to, to articulate back to them things. But um, since then, I've done a lot more study on it. And there are studies that have shown that people who have money of some kind, you know, enough to survive on, make better choices than if they don't have money. So for example, like seasonal workers who only like farmers, fishermen, those kinds of things, they get a lot of money at one time and that has to last in the year. Well, while they still have that money, they actually make really good choices in their life. They eat the right foods, they do things, they don't overspend, um, they think about it. But as the money gets lower and lower and they get near that time where they're gonna then go back to work um, because it's the fishing season or whatever season it is, as the money gets less, they actually make poorer choices. It's interesting. So that is something there 
that's real, that they've been showing. So we have to take people's needs seriously. I don't know if any of you have looked at the book that, um, or, or were on the webinar with Ibram Kenji, who was the, um, the book that they were reading in the diocese was How Not to Be a Racist, or How to Be an Anti-Racist. That's what it was, How to Be an Anti-Racist. And it was interesting, I know John's group, who is a predominantly black congregation, um, read the book, and, and it was interesting to listen to them say some things, because one of the things he says is, you can't control the way people think. You can control your actions. So those of us who are white, who have money, cannot possibly understand what it is to be black, to be poor, to not have the same rights, those who are straight don't really understand what it means to be gay. And so we are racist, sexist, all those things. Men can't understand what it's like for a woman in the workplace either. So it all goes together. And so sometimes we have those thoughts, like when I, then I brought up universal income, because I hear a lot of time from people about all kinds of things, be it about money, addiction, whatever. Why don't they just pick themselves up by their bootstraps? My mother-in-law said that up until the time that my father-in-law killed himself. My ex-mother-in-law and ex-father-in-law, by the way. So she didn't understand because she had never been addicted. She couldn't understand what it meant to be an alcoholic. And so she just didn't understand why he just didn't straighten himself up and give up that and spend money wisely and do all these things. She just couldn't understand. And that happens to a lot of us. But it could be different if our actions are different. Even if we think, why can't they pick themselves up by their bootstraps? But we go out there and we advocate for them. We go out there and feed the hungry. We visit those in prison. If we actually do those things, that's what's really important. That's what's going to change the world. And that's what's going to change the thoughts of other people farther down the line. We can't change the thoughts of people now. But if we can change the world, everybody's thoughts will be different. That's hard sometimes for people to get. They want to change people's minds right now. They want to get in your face and tell you, this is what you should be thinking. But that doesn't work because we're human beings. But if we change the way we act and take these things seriously, even if we don't understand them, we can change the world. So one definition that you didn't give me for love when I asked was commitment. Being committed to the other, whoever they are. And if you are committed to God, you are committed to the other, you will do wonderful things. So that's what it's really all about. Commitment. Making things happen. Because you are committed to someone else. So we come back to the pray without ceasing. In whatever form that might be. Even if it's forgetting for 99% of the day and coming back to it. If we keep doing that, it'll be then 98% of the time, 97, 95, 90. We'll get there. Practice prayer without ceasing. Your love brings you to commitment for social justice, making sure that the other is taken care of that everyone has enough, because everyone is a child of God. We need to make sure that they are all taken care of. And at this time, it also means to vote. And who do we vote for? We need to vote for those people who think and are committed to our neighbors, to all our neighbors 
to do the things, no matter what they think, but to do all those things that are necessary to take care of our neighbors. And yes, voting is now open and will be through Sunday for early voting. And then we'll have voting day in only a week. We can change how everyone is taken care of in this world if we find the right people to run for office who are committed to love. Questions all to come back to, so what are we going to do, both as individuals and as the Church of the Resurrection? What are we going to do in our commitments to other? How do we love God and neighbor? Now as we stand together, let us profess our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. God's encouraging words still sounding in our ears, let us frame again the prayers which linger in all human hearts. For the leaders of the church, that they may sing hearted in the love of God and in service to the people. We pray for faith and love that we may all proclaim God's word. We pray for the Diocesan Young Adult Network, Christ in St. Stephen's Church, Manhattan the archivist and the historiographer of the Diocese Corporation for the Relief of Widows and Widowers and Children of the Clergy Persons of the Episcopal Church in the State of New York, Diocesan Disaster Response Team, St. Andrew's Church Walden, All Saints Church Briarcliff Manor, and Hopewell Church Cycle of Prayer for Hopewell Reformed Church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Andrew, Alan, and Mary, our bishops, 
for the people of the Diocese of New York, and for all the faithful people. Over the thunder of war, we hear God's call to peace, and we pray for wise leadership. We pray for our President, Congress, and the Supreme Court, and for the leaders of all nations. For the land in which we live, that we see it as your gift. We pray that all Christians may hold their goods and money lightly and use them for the sake of God's society. For the imprisoned and the oppressed, the solitary and the unwanted, for those who suffer, including Will, Ashley, Kristen, Annetta, Dorothy, Maddie, Susan, Fran, Dorothy, Bob, Betty, John, Gail, Donna, Jan, Dwayne, Lorna, Helene, Paul, Don, Marie, those affected by the hurricanes, those affected by wildfires out west, those going back to school, Lillian, Will, Jane, Frank, Nicholas, Jennifer. For those serving in our armed forces on active duty, Alicia, Ivor, Mike, Dennis, Cheryl, Jeff, John, Caitlin. For those celebrating birthdays, celebrating baptism anniversaries, Emma, Sirocco, and Sarah Sirocco. For those celebrating wedding anniversaries that they may know the love of Christ and the care of the Christian community. We pray that your gift of hope will strengthen them on their way to holiness. For the dying and for the dead, including Harriet, Uncle Morris Rogers, and especially those we love, that they may rest in the presence of God. And we offer our other prayers and thanksgivings at this time, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, a lover of souls, and to you we give glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposed to your will. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. All are welcome at the Lord's table and are invited to share communion with us.
for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises God through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God.
shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety. You do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. If you pass through raging waters in the sea, you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand. Are your poor? For the kingdom shall be there. Blessed are who weep and mourn, for one day you shall laugh. And if we weep once in souls, then hate you all because.
we stand together, let us pray together. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. I have several announcements. I actually have announcements this week, so that's pretty good. Next Sunday is All Saints Day. So there's two things about All Saints Day you need to know. One, you need to change your clocks. Or you can join me here early, <laughs> which is fine. You're always welcome here early. But yes, you'll want to change your clocks. The other thing is we have a tradition where we bring pictures of those who have gone before us into heaven to be with us, that we are surrounded by the saints. This year we can't, like, put them up, but if you would still like to bring them, please do and have them with you. It's always wonderful to be surrounded by those saints with us. Um, this week there will be no Wednesday Eucharist. I have to take the day off this Wednesday, so no Eucharist on Wednesday. I will call Dorothea to make sure she knows as well. So, um, stewardship time is upon us, so you will be shortly receiving your stewardship letter for the year, as well as your pledge form. And I know this is a very, very unusual year, and it's really hard to know what's coming next. And so, when you fill out your pledge form, please just fill it out for what you think you can actually give. Um, we know that there's issues for work and all kinds of things that people are facing. And we'd rather be able to figure out our budget based on something that's realistic. And then, if, thanks be to God, if you actually have more money and would like to give more, never fear. We always have a way to spend that money, <laughs> so we can always use that. Thanksgiving baskets. We'll be getting new information. We will be doing Thanksgiving baskets again this year, so get everybody on their radar, and I will send out a separate email um, for that so that we can get that started soon. And as I mentioned earlier, early voting has started. I don't know if any of you have been seeing Duchess. It is um, one of the places is East Fishkill, and I think Poughkeepsie, and then it's further away than that for those of us. I will tell you that people are very enthusiastic this year about voting, and that includes our area as well. Um, John went by, and then I went by East Fishkill, because um, it's close for us, and our road was closed earlier, so we weren't taking it. And they were all weaved around the parking lot. There was enough people, so um, I think what we're going to do is we already have our, our ballots, so I think we're going to go and see if we can jump the line and just deposit them <laughs> and um, vote that way. So just to let you all know that that is happening and voting is soon and then um, it will be the end of political ads. And if nothing else, that is a good thing. <laughs> um. Reverend? Yep. Well, I, uh, I believe that the polling uh, area for this part of the county is the village of Fishkill. Oh, and you guys have Not the Fishkill. Okay. The village of Fishkill. Yeah, it all depends on where in this area you live. It's, you know, we've got everybody from everywhere here. So, yeah, so Poughkeepsie may be for some of you. And I did not go up there. That's <laughs> far north for me. So, yep. Uh, anything else? And if we have any birthdays, anniversaries, baptismal anniversaries? Birthday. Birthday. Woohoo! So, everyone, let's put up our hands. Excuse me. Watch over your child, the Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls. 
and in her heart, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God, creator Christ, and Holy Spirit, come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday! to have a celebration.